Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geeky Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. The other day I created a model and after creating lots of little pieces and moving them around and grouping them together and welding them together, by the time I was finished and after I had texture mapped it, I brought it into view here and, well, here's a render of it, but I decided that these metal pieces here I wanted to have uh, some reflection applied to it so it would look a little bit more realistic more like uh, some stainless steel which is what you would see on um, you know older style coke machines and I thought well the easiest way to do that is to apply um, some reflection to it and while it would create a, a chrome or stainless steel look I knew that it would not create the look that I am trying to go for so what I wanted to do is I wanted to use a reflection map kind of like this and if you're a poser user, I'm sure these are very familiar to you because, well, poser uses reflection maps in lots and lots of its uh, the models that you can uh, get for it. So I created this really quickly in Photoshop. And when I applied it to my model and I rendered it, I realized I had made some poor choices when I modeled this because I didn't separate properly the pieces of my model that would make applying a reflection map to it easy. For example, here is the machine, the Coke machine, and it's its own separate object. The other part of this is the metal pieces but the metal pieces also include some areas that I don't want the reflection map applied to. For example, this little decal here has instructions on how to operate the machine. And inside the door here, we've got holes actually it's not holes there's this is just a, an image of holes with a uh, coke bottle inside and if I applied that texture that reflection map to this object right here it would also apply that reflection value to this instruction decal and these holes here with the soda and that's not what I want. I want the, the reflection to only be applied to this metal here. So I thought, well, I could go back into my modeling program and do some major surgery by removing and separating pieces and regrouping them together. And that would take a little bit longer, uh, a lot longer than I really wanted to spend. I had already spent uh, two days on and off creating this model I didn't want to go back and have to do some re major surgery in repairing it so I thought well what's a what's a viable workaround and then I thought well we'll create a transparency mask and I'm doing this tutorial in view 5 because um, I've got some emails on how to do tutorials using older versions of view cuz not everyone has, you know, infinite and uh some of the more expensive flavors that view uh comes in. And while this is infinite, I don't have a spree or any of the um earlier versions. This is the best I can do for the oldest version of view, so I thought I would uh, use view 5 to create this tutorial but it can also be done in view 6 and of course in view 7. So let's start off I'm going to close this out let's come into Photoshop and first off we'll create a reflection map 
Now, if you're a poser user, then you're probably very familiar with reflection maps as they're constantly used on, on many poser objects. So to begin with, I'm going to create a new folder, new file, 250 by 250. It doesn't have to be big. And I'm going to make it 300 dpi and click OK. Now I'm going to leave my default colors set to black and white. I'm going to come up here to filter and come down here to render. And I'm going to render clouds. Come back to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to uh, use a value of oh, 07 or 8, something like that. Now I'm going to come up here to filter, artistic, and I'm going to choose plastic wrap. And these are the settings that uh, I'm going to use. And I guess that's OK. And I'm going to click All right. Now I'm going to come up here to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. I want to add a little bit more contrast, a little bit more dark, and a little bit more light. There we are. And click OK. So that's our reflection. And that took all of about, what, 30 seconds? So I'm going to save this file, save as. And I'll call it Test Reflection Map 2. Click OK. And we're done with Photoshop. Now let's come back into view. Here's the render of the Coke machine. Now what I'm going to do is I want to apply that reflection map to the metal parts. And just to show you the difference that the reflection map makes versus just adding reflection, let's just bring this up to about 70%. And we'll do a render. And that's what a reflection value of 70% gives to the brushed metal. Not very realistic. So let's come back in here. And we're going to use a reflection map. So I'm going to enable reflection map, click on load, and we'll use our reflection map that we just created. And let's rend close this out and we will render. All right, now notice the difference. This looks very realistic, very much like brushed, um, polished steel or stainless steel or chrome. Look at the uh, the corners and the, the, the edges. It looks far more realistic. Unfortunately, what I don't like is there are areas of this that I don't want this reflection applied to. And I'll show you here exactly what I what I mean. Let's let me move my soda machine closer and show you the area that I don't want the reflection applied to. Here is my instruction decal. Well, I don't want a reflection applied to that. And these holes here, actually they're not holes, it's a, it's a JPEG image that looks like a hole with a bottle in it. It also has the reflection map applied to it. And I don't want that. I want just the metal portions. So again, without going back into my modeling program and doing some major surgery um, there I, I figured out how I, I figured there's got to be another way and that is by creating a um, mask in Photoshop so here is my texture map that we're going to create a transparency map with. This is the map that we applied our reflection map to. And it applied it to this area here, which I don't want. And it applied it here to these bottles, which I don't want either. So what I want to do is mask those areas off. So I'm going to come up here to my magic um, now I'll come up here to my rectangular marquee tool I'll create a selection around that and alt delete will fill that in with black on a new layer of course 
And now what I will do is I'll use my let's try the magic wand tool and see what oops see what the magic wand tool will do for us here. Nope, control delete. I will use the elliptical marquee tool. Hold down shift to create a perfect circle. And I'm just going to create a selection here. Create a new layer. Alt delete to fill that in with black. I'm going to duplicate that layer, control D to deselect, hold down shift and just move this straight down. Let me reduce the opacity of it so I can see I can get it lined up. There we are. And let's move down to our next hole. Copy that again and reduce the opacity and move it right on over there. There we are create a layer underneath all of that and I'm going to fill that in with white. So this is the map that we've just created. Let's save this, save as JPEG and we'll call this test um, alpha map. And I'll lower the quality of it down substantially. It doesn't need to be high and that's that. Let's come back into view. Now let's open up our material here. Let's check variable reflectivity. Right click edit function. Click anywhere in here to create a blank node. I'm going to come over here and click on my texture map. I'm going to select these two. I'm, going to, I'm sorry, link these two together and navigate my way to my oh no not that one test alpha map click OK click OK again now let's do a render and see the difference and this is almost done but immediately you see the results that that alpha mask gave us it allowed us to mask off the areas that we don't want the reflection map applied to, notably here, here, and here, and and it applied it only to the metal areas. I mean and and that reflection map really makes the the metal look realistic. All around these corners here, it looks really slick. And it's a lot faster to render using a, a reflection map than if, we're, than if we just applied re, a reflection setting to it and had it reflecting our environment. So um, I think this tutorial can help you when you run across some design or texturing problems and how alpha masks can help you out. In addition, creating reflection masks make for some highly, highly realistic looking metalwork. Now, I will say this, if you're using View 7, this may also apply to View 6. I haven't tested it out. But in View 7, when you go to link your reflection tab here up to your texture map, it's going to give you an op, it's going to give you two options, grayscale or I believe alpha output. Um, if you're doing, if you're going to use this method in View 7, you want to use grace, the grayscale option once you hook these up together. And uh, so that's it for this tutorial. I certainly hope this this helps you in all of your rendering and modeling projects as well as texturing. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name's Gary Miller. Have a good day.